Good morning. Today we'll review the information about the anus, rectum, and prostate. I want you to review the anatomy um, because it's so vital that you can visualize the anatomy uh, in order to do a comprehensive and competent assessment. Uh, look specifically at the anatomy of the anus, rectum, and prostate. And this um, illustration gives you the side view. And then if you note on the right, you have an illustration of the posterior view. The GI tract terminates in a short segment, the anal canal. So normally the anal canal is held in close position by two muscles, the voluntary external anal sphincter and the involuntary internal anal sphincter. The angle of the anal canal lies on a line roughly between the anus and the umbilicus. The anal canal is liberally supplied by somatic sensory nerves. A seriated line demarcates the anal canal from the rectum, and the anorectal junction is the boundary between the somatic and the visceral nerve supplies. The most common, uh, excuse me, in a male, the prostate gland lies against the anterior rectal wall. It's rounded, heart-shaped, and normally about 2.5 centimeters long. Only the lateral lobes and the median sulcus are palpable. In the female, the uterine cervix usually is palpable through the anterior wall of the rectum. So common or concerning symptoms that have to do with this, this anatomy is change in bowel habits, blood and stool, pain with defecation, rectal bleeding or tenderness, anal warts or fissures, weak stream of urine, and burning upon urination. So really when we're separating our health history questions about concerning symptoms, we classify it into two different categories, the lower gastrointestinal and the lower genitourinary. So with the lower GI concerns, questions such as, is there any change in the pattern of bowel function? any change in the size or caliber of the stool, any diarrhea or constipation, what color is the stool, and any obvious blood or mucus in the stool. Lower GI concerns also include pain on defecation, itching, extreme tenderness in the anus or rectum, purulent discharge or bleeding, any prior history of anal warts, ulceration or fissures, and you also have to include if they um, perform anal intercourse, or you should, you should ask that question. Lower GU concerns for men have to do with difficulty starting or holding back the urine stream. Is the urine flow weak? Is there frequent urination, especially at night? Is there any pain or burning upon urination or ejaculation? I also would include if there was any blood in the urine or the semen, if there's any pain or stiffness in the lower back, hips, or upper thighs, and any discomfort or heaviness at the base of the penis with associated malaise, fever, or chills. So one of our strengths is our health promotion and counseling, and in this realm, we are really looking at three areas. One is screening for prostate cancer, and this is related to the fact that it's the leading cancer diagnosed in men in the U.S. and the third leading cause of death. The primary risk factors are age, ethnicity, and family history, and um, our author says that although a series of studies has suggested an association between the intake of dietary fat and the risk of prostate cancer. So that's also a consideration. The second area we um, promote um, and counsel on is the screen for polyps and colorectal cancer. And then the third area is um, providing counseling about sexually transmitted diseases. So let's review the technique of examination. 
the anorectal and prostate exams are usually the least popular segments of the physical exam, not only for the examiner, but for our patient. So we generally save those for last. Um, however, if it's a focused exam, that's what you're focusing on and you're not doing a head to toe. Um, a skillfully performed exam really shouldn't be painful. Now, different situation if they have inflammation or infection. So those are cues um, and clues to possibly something that's going on. And then successful examination requires a calm demeanor, a full explanation to the patient of what he or she may feel, gentleness and slow movement of your finger, but um, also confidence that you know what you're doing. Um, and there's no doubt in asymptomatic adolescence, um, it's appropriate to defer a rectal exam. So the only reason why we do rectal exams on adolescents or children is if there is a problem. So for the male patient, one of several patient positions may be used for exam. The patient may stand leaning forward with the upper body resting across the examining table and the hips flexed. That's my favorite um, position for a patient to be in for this exam. Or the patient may lie on his left side with his left buttocks close to the edge of the exam table near you. Flex the patient's hips and knees, especially the top leg. So you're inspecting the sacrococcygeal and the perianal areas. You are looking particularly for lumps, ulcers, inflammation, rashes, or excoriation. And you're also palpating any abnormal areas, noting lumps or tenderness. Occasionally, there is severe tenderness that prevents entry and internal examination. So you stop, and instead you place your fingers on both sides of the anus and generally spread the orifice and ask the patient to bear down. That enables you to look for a lesion such as an anal fissure that might explain the tenderness. Lubricate a gloved index finger and explain what you're going to do. Explanation really helps ease their fear and um, their trepidation. Inspect the anus, noting any lesions. Ask the patient to strain down. Place the finger pad over the anus and gently insert your fingertip into the anal canal. Proceed with insertion upon relaxation of the sphincter, and it only takes a couple of seconds. Assess for sphincter tone of the anus, tenderness, induration, irregularities, or nodules. You want to examine the posterior surface of the prostate gland. Identify the lateral lobes and the median sulcus. Note the size and the shape and the consistency of the prostate. Identify any nodules or tenderness, or you might have a bilateral difference in size. Um, normal prostate is rubbery and non-tender, and if possible, extend your finger above the prostate to the region of the seminal vesicles and the peritoneal cavity. Note any nodules or tenderness. Uh, I'm not able to do that. My finger's not long enough. And note the color of any fecal matter on the glove and test it for occult blood when you withdraw your finger. I will also tell you that um, I do not have long nails. I keep my nails short because I do rectal examination. So our author provides a question just to clarify um, what a normal versus an abnormal finding for the prostate. Take a moment to review. And the answer, the abnormality was that they described the prostate as firm because normally the prostate is rubbery. Something I suggest you do is make a fist Okay, and where your thumb laps your first finger, I want you to feel right in that area of your hand. Um, that is a very good analogy of what a prostate gland feels like. It's, it is um, rubbery and not firm. So techniques for examination in the female patient um, are somewhat different. Uh, the rectum is usually examined af after the female genitalia and while the woman is in the lithotomy position. 
This position is ideal for conducting the bimanual exam and is suitable for testing the integrity of the rectovaginal wall and may also help to palpate a cancer high in the rectum. Now, I, I will tell you, I do this on my patients. I, I ask permission. I explain to them that I need to feel the wall between the rectum and the vaginal canal. And I tell them that I, once I do my rectal exam, then I will also um, perform an examination of the vaginal wall and the rectum and have two fingers inserted. Again, just educating my patient of what I'm going to do. And then if they give me permission, that is included in my examination. If the rectum is the only thing that requires examination, the sideline position affords a much better view to the perianal and sacrococcygeal area. So use the same technique for examination as used for the man uh, for the rectal examination only. And uh, we'll end our presentation with um, a question for our, uh, assessment. Um, you can look at this question. The female patient may remain in a lateral position for examination of the following. And it, look at your choices. And the answer was a perianal fissure. A and again, I'm just reiterating, the rectum is usually examined while the patient's in, the woman is in a lithotomy position, which is also ideal for conducting that bimanual examination, and it's suitable for testing the integrity of the rectovaginal wall. It may also help to palpate a, a cancer high in the rectum. If the rectum only requires exam, you can use the sideline position because it affords a much better view. So who, who do I do um, this bimanual exam on? I offer it to everybody 40 or over, or if anyone is having um, a complaint. So um, I don't typically in a well younger woman don't offer it, but at 40 I do. So thank you for your attention.